Lord, help us this morning. Holy Spirit, help us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God always calls us to, but there is an urgency to come to the secret place, to live and to dwell in the holies of holies. And so this morning, I just invite you to fill this space here in the front. Um, do what you feel like you need to do, but I feel like there's a call this morning to holies of holies worship. The Lord says this morning is not for outer court worship. There's a place of intimacy that God wants to bring each and every one of us to this morning. And so I just pray that as we worship, you just respond to how God is just pulling on your heart and that you would accept this invitation from him to go deeper and to dwell in the secret place with him not just today, but this year, that this year would be marked where you're standing face to face with the Lord in constant communion and worship with him. Amen. You became 
vision of all the hearts in this room. There are physical tears in this room, but there are also tears of the heart. Kivi, if you will go back to that every last drop, every last drop, but those physical tears in the room, every last drop at the feet of Jesus. Those tears of the heart, every last drop at the feet of Jesus. The Lord is saying, I don't want you to start the year off any other way, but leave it at the feet of Jesus. The worry that is in this room has to go. Where the joy of the Lord abides, worry is not there. So every last drop at the feet of Jesus. And we want to pray joy into this room because every last drop of sorrow, of worry has been left at the foot of the cross, has been left at the feet of Jesus. And every crying heart shall rejoice in the name of Jesus. Every last drop, every tear will be joy at the end of this worship set. And we proclaim right now joy in this room. Can we sing? Every Every last drop, every last drop, every last drop at the feet. Come on, sing it out. Every last, yes, yes, every last. Come on, sing it out, church. Every last drop at the feet. Every last drop. Every last drop. Every last. Come on, sing it out. Every the feet of Jesus, every last drop, every last drop, every last drop, at the feet of Jesus. you guys don't believe it yet some of you are receiving it but some of you are not believing it quite yet can we take it slow every last give it to him you are not called to carry that you are not called to carry that it's not meant for you let it go every last drop every last drop 
at the feet of Jesus. Every last Let it go. Every last drop. Every last drop at the feet of Jesus. Every last drop. left is joy all that is 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 left is joy come on see your joy all that is left is joy all that is left is joy
He's drawing us into a dance this morning. A dance of rejoicing. A dance of joy. A dance of freedom. A dance of hope. The lover of your soul. Is there someone that feels like they're supposed to pray right now? Prayer. Prayer. Is, is there someone that feels like they have a prayer to pray or a word to release right now? I just keep hearing over and over again, dance, praise, joy, dance, praise, joy. If you're walking into 2024, not dancing for the Lord, if you're walking into 2024 defined by your circumstance that you left in 2023, if you are walking into 2024 determined to keep the same pain that you had before, why are you not dancing for the Lord? Why are you not praising him? Lord, release the spirit of dance in this place. Release the spirit of praise in this place. We want your joy, Lord. We receive your joy, Father. You have not come into this 2024 year to stand in your pew, to sit in your pew. You have come to praise the Lord. You have come to praise the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Act like it. Act like the joy of the Lord is your strength. Stop standing in your seat. Stop sitting down. Come into the altar, come down to your Father and praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. He deserves to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised through your circumstance. He is worthy to be praised when you are in pain, when you hurt. Do not allow your circumstance to define what your praise looks like to the Lord. Your knee may be hurt and come down and bow because He has healed you. Your pain may be so unbearable. Come down and dance you. He has let you live. He has allowed for you to be in 2024. So praise him. Praise. Dance. Joy. Praise. Dance. Joy. Praise him. Come down from out of your seats. Come down from out of your cube. Come and fill this place. Come and fill this space. This space is a dedication to the Lord. This space is a dedication 
dedicated to staying in your seat because you think God will do it, then I urge you, I urge you to come down and act like he's doing it because he's doing it. He's doing it. It's already done. It is finished. 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 Your joy. Your joy is what he provided. Joy unspeakable, joy unspeakable. 
You know, sometimes when we come, we all come with different things. And there's a lot to navigate through and press through in worship. And then you feel the heavens open and you can feel the presence of God descend. And you know, that's what we wanna do when we come and we worship. We just wanna make space for him to come and for him to dwell and for him to be in our midst. And I believe that this morning as we've worshiped him, that we've opened the heavens and given him space to come and to dwell in our midst. Thank you, Daddy God. Thank you, Daddy God, for coming and being in our midst. Father, we're hungry for more. We're thirsty for more. Our hearts are ready to receive the more. Whatever that looks like during the duration of this service, our hearts are ready to receive it, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Brothers and sisters, if you would allow me to be a little uh, free this morning, normally we would prepare to take communion, but I, I think it's important, this being the first one of the new year, that the children are present. So I'm going to shift that towards the end when they return. Uh, I will deal with my message, however, accordingly when they return. Um, and we'll, that communion will be one of the last things we do this morning once the children are back in the sanctuary with us. Uh, right now, I would ask if you would prepare your tithes and your offerings. Um, if you're making checks out, you can make them to the city of God, Hagerstown. Yes, amen. You can make them out to COG, however, okay? So that is online now. So we've made that aspect, that transition. So again, if you're writing checks, you can make them out to the city of God or you can abbreviate COG, whichever you choose. You should find uh, new offering envelopes also if you need them throughout the sanctuary up front if you will need one. Yes, ma'am. You can still you can still use that. You you can still donate through the app. Yep, that's it's you're fine. Yep, it'll still go through. Okay. Yep, on the app too, ladies and gentlemen. If you're using that, you can still go ahead and donate through the app. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. You know, I think sometimes pastors get kind of jammed up when you start handling and talking to people about money. Sometimes people get jammed up when you start talking to them about money. I'm not sure why. I, I don't know why. I mean, your, your father's kingdom, the streets are paved with gold, ladies and gentlemen. Transparent gold. That's what the word says. I didn't make it up. It's in the word. You know, we start looking at biblical examples and, and all kind of stuff gets construed. Uh, uh, Elder Ed taught back at Christmas. You know, you got people will tell you that Joseph couldn't afford to buy a place in Bethlehem. Well, that's not true. There just wasn't any room. It, it didn't have anything with affordability. And ladies and gentlemen, when, when, when it appeared to be a shortfall, Daddy brought three guys <laughs> from the East. And you're thinking, well, the only thing they brought of value was gold. No nonsense. You need to understand uh, ancient times. The frankincense and myrrh, ladies and gentlemen, were high commodities that could be used, but they could also be traded. You know, when we, we start thinking and talking about money, the bottom line is a heart matter. I'm not standing to tell you how much you got to give. That's between you and God, honestly. I'm not ever going to sit up here and tell you that if you give X amount of dollars in the next 20 minutes, ding, 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 you're the grand prize winner. The devil is a liar. The bottom line is what you give is between you and God. 
period. When the Holy Spirit's dealing with you, talking with you, you give, period. You can attest before the merger. I don't beat people up over money. I don't ask for money because I'm not dependent on you for money. Daddy will move on you to make that move or he'll bring it from somewhere else. That's just the way it is. But ladies and gentlemen, the deal is it's a matter of the heart. When we can all get into a certain place, and that's generally for us, that's the last place. We have that foothold we want to hang on to because it's that control factor. You see what I'm saying? It's that control factor going into 2024. I want to make sure, I want to make sure I'm off to a good start. Well, how many of you know, circumstances could come along and wipe that good start out in a minute. So if that's where my focus is, I'm already off. Amen. I said enough. Actually, I didn't. John 19.30, he said it's finished. I didn't. He said it's finished. I didn't. He said it's finished. Whatever it is. That's what you were just dancing here about. That's what you were just singing about. It is finished. Doesn't matter how it feels, pain in your body right now, it's finished. Lack or lack thereof, it is finished. It's already done. It's a matter of mindset. It's all a matter of mind set. I guess I'm going to take the offering up my smoke this morning. Hallelujah. That'll work. If you would, ladies and gentlemen, bring your tithes and offerings up. Thank you. Hallelujah. Mindset. Mindset, mindset. I'm going to deal with that here in a couple minutes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ikadabasuta. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Osiketabasana. King Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Want to pray? Go ahead, pray. Thank you all so much this morning. Thank you. Praise and worship. Thank you. Hallelujah. Man, I'm walking and popping. Walking and popping. Walking and popping. Look at that. My God, I tell you, technology, man, I'm telling you. Mm -mm, walking and popping. If I start pop locking, then y'all really got something to worry about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like my did my mic go out? Am I still can you all hear me? All right. Hallelujah. Brother, am I set? <laughs> all right. Let me jump on this word right quick before the kids come back, guys. First fruit today, Shavat. I will push out Christine Vallis' chalkboard teaching here later on this afternoon, guys. Real quick here. A couple characteristics of the month. Very interesting. One I want to point out. New message that came up on our announcements this morning. Deals with generations. I didn't bookmark this one. But just give me a second. I'll find it. Mm-hmm.
Yes. <clears throat> a regrouping period for new generations to build up, to renew, to refresh prophetess and Pastor Cheryl wanting to work and teach our young people, our children, how to pray. That deals with the longevity and perpetual of working with uh, our younger generation and teaching them the importance of prayer. That's, that's, that's one aspect of this month. Real quick, I want you to keep in mind, again, Shavat. It started on the 10th of January, and it'll end on February 9th. And it means the month of the new year of trees. Okay? That's what Shavat means, the month of the new year of trees. You're thinking, what does that have to do with me? You need to understand, Daddy sees you as a tree, ladies and gentlemen. We'll get into Psalm 1 here in a minute where it talks a little bit more. Uh, the actual alphabet, the letter is Sadiq, Sadiq, and it means righteousness one, or righteous, righteous one, excuse me. When we look at Jehovah Sid Kanu, our righteousness is where that's extracted from. Melchizedek, king of righteousness. So understand how this letter, this word is built into scripture. If you have your, your, your Bibles there real quick, I don't have my chalkboard up here today, so I'm going to kind of go on the fly a little bit. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5 for me. 2 Corinthians 5. Second Corinthians five twenty one. Real quick. <clears throat> Are you there? Okay. Second Corinthians five twenty one. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Repeat after me. I am, I am. the righteousness. Of God in Christ Jesus. One more time, two more times. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. One more time. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, that's got to become, <clears throat> that's got to become foundation. It has to be foundation. In fact, this month, it talks about a characteristic. is This is the month that become, righteousness becomes our foundation. Our understanding of who we are in Christ is paramount. Because if not, if not, when I do something, when I miss the mark, miss the mark is sin. When I miss the mark, when I sin, that, that my focus becomes that. So I, I cease to be righteous conscious, and I become sin conscious. But the thing is, the more sin conscious I become, it's telling me I'm eating from the wrong tree. The last time we were together, remember we talked about the testimony of the two trees. When I start focusing on my sin and unrighteousness, I am eating from the wrong tree. My righteousness has nothing to do with my actions. I'm going to say it again. My righteousness has nothing to do with my actions. It is a state of position that has been created by me, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And nothing else. Can't take anything from it and certainly can't add anything to it. That's where I have to be. I have to be grounded in that. Banner morning, didn't get up as early as I thought. Cold, didn't want to get out of bed. Didn't get my word time in. Cruising down the highway, going to my job. Someone cuts me off, and I start having wrong thoughts. Next thing you know, wrong thoughts lead to wrong words. Next thing you know, I want to start throwing out them one-finger salutes. And then I start getting them back. Okay, that might be harsh for some of y'all. Some of y'all might not do that. I may have lost some of y'all with wrong words and wrong thoughts, but nonetheless, you're tracking with me, amen? Huh? 
it causes an impact inside of me. And then and it'll cause me to think, oh, wait a minute. I, I, my right, oh, Lord have mercy. My right standing is gone. But no, ladies and gentlemen, that's mindset. Your right standing is not gone. Your right standing can't be gone because your right standing is not your own. You have not done anything to achieve it. So you certainly can't lose it. Do you realize right now sitting in this sanctuary, regardless of what's going through your head, whether you focused on the roast, the chicken, the steak, what you're going to do, do you realize that you are right now as righteous as you'll ever be? There's not getting any more. There is not getting any more. Period. Ladies and gentlemen, it don't come in levels. I am not a certain level of righteousness and you're not. Nonsense. You are right now as righteous as you'll ever be. You have to come in to the understanding and thought process of that and nothing else. Because if you don't, we are all going to constantly miss it. Are you guys with me? We'll miss it. Two trees. Testimony. Okay. Say the choice is mine. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I call this day for you to record or I'm going to record against you what you are going to choose. You can choose life and blessing or you can choose death and curse in Scripture. The choice is yours. Say the choice is mine. The choice is mine. going to choose as it is understanding and Is that better? Oh, much. Much. That's more better. Someone said that's more better. The choice is mine. Jello or cake? Y'all, if y'all know me, you know which one I'm migrating to. I can tell you it is not J E L L O. Uh uh. That's nasty. Sorry if I offended you, Jello eaters. That's not for me. Uh uh. It's a choice. But ladies and gentlemen, let's not make it any more difficult. That The choice between desserts is the same choice, righteousness and unrighteousness. It's a choice. Mindset. It's, it's the same thing. Don't, don't allow the devil to make it any greater. Don't allow him to, to get in and disrupt process of thought. It's the same. Listen, Jesus knew who he was. He knew who he was in the wilderness. And what happened was when the devil came in and said, turn these stones to bread, what he was trying to get Jesus to do was take a substitution instead of substance. If he could get Jesus to take the substitution and Jesus would do this in his own strength and in his own power, well, then he had him where he wanted him. But it's no different than us. When he makes me take something that's less a substitution than what God wants, he has me where he wants me. Now, to piggyback on that righteousness piece, when that happens, and it does, we simply go back to Father, I missed it. Forgive me. And ladies and gentlemen, remember we talked about dropping it right there at the feet? Remember we sang that? That's the action. When you miss it, go to the Father. Daddy, I missed it. Forgive me. And it's done. It's dropped. Move on. Now, if you decide to drop that thing and pick it up and carry it around, that's totally up to you. But when that happens, I'm telling you, the devil is renting space in your head. And he will corrupt the mindset. You understand what I'm saying? And this is often time where a lot of fear, anxiety, and everything else come into play, ladies and gentlemen. That's why, okay? 
Do you understand that anger really is a result of fear? Anger is a result of fear. And why do we fear? 1 John 4, 17 says, perfected love cast out fear. Perfected love, there is no fear in perfected love. So we might have to go back to square one and start singing simple Bibles, uh, uh, Sunday school Bible lessons like we used to sing like Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Man, don't you let them, them truths like that escape you. If you're operating in fear and anger, it is because love has not been perfected. Or you may have been in a position of perfected love, but you have shifted out of it. Do you understand where I'm at? It's perfected love, ladies and gentlemen. It is his perfected love. When I get a hold of his perfected love, and I'm meditating on his per perfected love, that will now come back on scene, change the way I think. Because regardless of whatever the situation or circumstance is facing me right there, I know that God is so much bigger. And since he is so much bigger, and his perfective love for me has made me bigger than that circumstance. So the question is now, do I, do I, do I, I can't see the forest for the trees because it's a wrong perspective. I got to come up to a higher level that I'm looking over the treetop so I can see what he wants me to see instead of what I am currently looking at. Are you with me, guys? I'm running through this right quick. What part of me is mindset, spirit, soul, or body? Amen. Spirit, soul, and body, right? Mindset is, is, is the soul. Soul is the area of the mind, will, and emotions, your thinker, and what? Chooser. I have a choice. Choice to stay broke, busted, and disgusted or shift into what daddy has for me. Listen, doesn't happen with a magic wand. It does not happen with a magic wand. Right here. Romans 10, 17, faith come by and hearing what? Faith come by and hearing what? Faith come by and hearing what? How's it coming predominantly? Ourselves. Yep, as you talk, as you talk to yourself, that's how your faith comes. Okay? That's how it comes. It's conversation with yourself. It's conversation with the Holy Spirit, what you're saying. Remember, there's a record being taken place. And listen, Daddy's got an, an angel right there, your angel recording. But understand, the wicked one has a minion paying attention to what you're saying, too. And it's waiting. I don't want to relegate that to the simple angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. But you need to understand in the realm of the spirit, ladies and gentlemen, that's what it looks like. And they're, 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 they're waiting for words. Over in Psalms, it says that the angels hearken unto the voice of the word of God. So now when I line up with the wicked one, guess what? It works, it works the opposite end of the spectrum. It's the same way. It's the same way. It, ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you how strong this thing is. I mean, literally, you and, and this this is not positive thinking. You know, that, that's great for positive thinkers and positive quotes. That's okay. But there has to be more substance to that. The word of God is not positive thinking. The word of God is the truth. And it is what makes change and rearranges circumstances. Are you with me? Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, understand, I don't want to take that too far out of, too far out of context because that's actually dealing with when you go and sit and have dinner with a king or, or I don't know, you could probably relegate it to a neighbor or someone of importance. We, we, are, we are minded to watch what and how we eat because though the person is serving the meal, there may be a hidden agenda. There may be something else that they're after, and they're just watching how you intake what you're taking in. And in the back of their mind, they could be thinking, I can't wait for them to leave. I can't stand them. 
Now, that's a hard saying, ladies and gentlemen, but you need to understand that. Now, what it puts in the mind to is the wicked one looking for a loophole. How can I get in? Indulgence over indulgence. What, 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 is, what is drawing them in? What delicacy is drawing them in? Is it the cake or is it the jello? Because I'm going to put them out there and they're going to have a choice, right? They're going to have a choice. And, and, and though the choice may, may look good, it is not necessarily God. And when I make that, that choice that's not of God, I am now in crosshairs again. And it is that slow process that he's trying to pull me deeper and deeper into a trap. Be vigilant and sober because your adversary walks around as a roaring lion seeking if you appear on the menu. That's what he's looking for. He's a flesh devil, ladies and gentlemen. He's a flesh devil. He watches. He has minions watching, waiting for the things we do and say, and then, boom, they pounce. Okay? I, I don't remember in Scripture where this passage uh, uh, is, but it, but it talks about when, when the devil, Satan, is revealed for who he is, and we see him, and we think, is that what caused all? The problems in the world? That's what it says we're going to say. It, do you mean that raggedy thing there rented space in my head all these years and I allowed it? The reason why he doesn't truly show himself is because he knows. He knows how much power for you are. So listen, he's got the back door. He doesn't come in with bells and whistles. He stands at the door, and if he blends in long enough, you're going to think he's a doorman at the door of your house. But he's not letting anything good in. Are you with me? Is that what it is, Isaiah 16? Do we need to put our eyes on that? Let's pray daily for who? Camilla? Would you say Isaiah 16? Oh, they're coming back. Isaiah 14, 16. All right. Let me see here. 14, 16. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <clears throat> yeah, this is when, when, when Lucifer's talking about ascending into heaven. And I'm going to hit 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit, verse 16. They that, see, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities? That's what we're saying, ladies and gentlemen. You mean to tell me that cat is the one that did all this? Yeah. Trees. Let's hit Psalm 91. Excuse me, Psalm 1 real quick. Because <clears throat> I told you I was going to be here. And I want to do that right quick. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. I'm going to read that. It's verse 3 is what I'm looking at. But I'm going to start in one. Are you there? I love to hear pages turn. Hallelujah. Psalm 1. Blesses the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters to bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does prospers. Verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Verse 5, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Verse 6, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Let's look at verse 3. 
one more time. And the individual shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. <clears throat> Have you ever seen a tree lying beside a creek or a river laying over just full of life? That's because it's tapped in it's still tapped into a water source. It's 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 still providing life. You see what I'm saying? Though it's fallen it's still drawing in what it needs. That tree could be laying over and just as green as it can be. Why? Its roots are still in life-giving water. This is very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. In the Hebrew, the word, wa the word water never appears singular. It's never a drop of water. The word in Hebrew for waters is mayim, and it's plural. It's inexhaustible. It never runs out. That's why David was able to say, my cup runs over. It never runs out. Regardless of how much I tap into God, I cannot exhaust him. That's enough right there to shout about right there. Cannot exhaust him. He says, come on and try me. In this season of Shavuot, we're called to remember Rebecca, Isaac's bride, and also the woman at the well that Jesus visited. Both those stories deal with water. When Abraham's servant showed up to find a bride for Isaac, the young lady, Rebecca, comes out. And he, he, he gives her a reward, but the thing is, this is just it. He, he needs something to drink. He needs water. But she did not only bring water to him. She brought water to the camels that carried him and supply. Now you're thinking, okay, I'm going to go give my dog a bowl of water, and he's going to take a couple, a couple laps, and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about a camel. I mean, they drink gallons and gallons of water, okay? We're not talking about all she had to do is now up at my grandmama's, <laughs> they, they, you know, you'd pump that bad boy, and the water start coming out. They don't, they don't have, they don't have running, running water. You see what I'm saying? You had to pump that thing, and then that water would come out. That's not what we're talking about. She went to the well with a bucket and brought it back, filled the trough up, went back, filled the trough up. That got a little bit exhausted. Calvin, we know what that's like, don't we? Well, we hauled some water out of this building yesterday, did we not? Good Lord Almighty. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you. I guarantee you we probably took between 60 and 100 gallons of water, if not more, out of this building yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So I, I got a perspective, and I learned a lot. Whew, did I learn a lot? <laughs> Daddy had me at the edge of the woodshed yesterday. Because I knew, but it slipped. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let your righteousness slip. Regardless of the situation or circumstance, don't let your righteousness slip. I'm not saying I, I sinned and did something. That's not what I'm saying. I'm trying to blend two ideas together. I knew that there was something that I had and needed to do, but I didn't do it. But the grace of God kept things from being worse. That's what I'm trying to get to you. So when, so when you, so, when, so don't forget your righteousness is what I'm saying. Don't forget that peace. When, when it slips and you forget, and it's going to happen. I'm not speaking evil. It's going to happen. What I want you to take away from this today is it does not matter because I can return to a God who loves me so much, who sent his son because he knew that I was going to mess up. He sent his son for me in order that I would always have right standing with him regardless. So regardless of how stinking I am, I can always come back to his love because it doesn't matter because when he looks at me he's looking at me through Jesus Christ are you with me I thought the kids were coming back I got a couple more minutes don't y'all look at the clock no don't look at the clock so <clears throat> over in Luke 17 Jesus talks about a sycamine tree he says you can say to the sycamine tree. I want you to understand a sycamine tree deals with situation, circumstance, kind of like that mountain. 
You can say to this sycamine tree, uh, sycamine tree be, be, be plucked up and cast into the sea, it shall obey you. So what it's saying is, regardless of whatever circumstance or situation that you are facing, you speak the word of God to that, that mess, and it has to uproot and move out of your life. Don't worry about how long it's going to take. If daddy said it, and you said what daddy says concerning it, it's got to go. Just hang in there. It's got to go. I want to take a look at this sycamine tree, guys, real quick. Hmm. I'm, I'm not. I'm not actually going in there. It was six. It was seventeen. Luke seventeen six. I'm not actually going to the passage, but that's what I'm referencing. I want to give you some characteristics of this sycamine tree. First of all, it has a very large and deep root structure. When I'm off, Mr. Mark, whatever you call it, sin, <clears throat> and and my my eyes are not focused where they should be. What can happen that fear and anger, if left unchecked, will turn into bitterness? It can. Regardless of the circumstances or situation, whether it's an event that took place or whether it's an individual that caused the event, it'll cause bitterness. Now, listen, <clears throat> that, that sycamine tree has a very large and deep root structure, like the roots of bitterness, okay? Like the roots of bitterness, they run deep cause unforgiveness. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about some, you asked me for that earlier, and I should have listened to you. These roots run deep. That's what happens when bitterness starts in our lives. It'll start out small, but the more I feed that bitterness, that fear, that anger, that root structure will get very, very complex. I like bonsai. Anyone know what bonsai is? Y'all got that? I got several trees at my house, some that I've grown, some that I'm working on. I got a Chinese elm there that's probably my oldest. I don't know how, how old it is. I couldn't do it now, but when it's drier, I can literally take that tree and pick it right up out of the pot. And it, it's, it's in about that much soil. But the network of roots is so dense that it'll hold that soil together. It's kind of like that's what the root of bitterness is. That's why it's so difficult to get it out of our lives, because once it starts, it weaves in. I'm going to be a little graphic here for a minute. I used to work for a veterinarian, guys. A heartworm on a dog. I saw a heart of a dog infested with heartworms. It was literally so encased with these worms. And what it does, it just constricts life out of the dog after a while. Same thing bitterness will do in our lives. It'll constrict the life right out of us, okay? It won't allow for, for blood flow. I'm not talking about the, the, the organ of the heart. I'm talking about the blood of Christ. Once we get to a point, it, it won't flow. We just That's why it talks about don't harden your heart. Are you with me? Second example, the sycamine tree's wood was the preferred wood for building caskets. Yes. Listen. Because where they grew, where they grew, little rain fell, and it was sparse. Lack of living water did something to the wood of the sycamine tree, which allowed it to be the preferred wood of choice for caskets at the time. Why? No rain falling in the area or little rain falling in the area where these trees are. Look at the comparison of the tree in Psalm 1, planted by rivers of living water. It continues to grow. Its leaves do not wither. It produces fruit in its season. Are you with me? Finally, the sycamine tree produces a fig that was very bitter. Bitter fruit is the only fruit produced by bitterness and unforgiveness. It's the only fruit produced. So when we're looking at this sycamine tree, this is the opposite of the tree, the mustard tree that we find in Matthew 13. I'm not going to go there, okay? I'm not going to go there. The kids should be up in a minute. But that, that mustard tree, it's a seed, right? 
And what do we know about that, that, that mustard seed? What do we know about it? It's very small, right? It's very small. And that's, that's the thing we probably talk about the most when we talk about uh, faith as a mustard seed. But I want you to look at it from this perspective. Though it's small, don't look at the size of the seed. Look at the capability of the seed, the potential. And I used this analogy before with you guys, a giant sequoia out there in California. Those things are huge. I'm talking, listen, guys, I could drive my truck through those two poles. If I could put my pickup truck in here, I'd drive my truck to those two poles. Trunks on them giant sequoias are easily that wide, if not all three, and some close to the width of this sanctuary. Tree trunk. Can you imagine what the seed looked like in that thing? That's what daddy started with, a seed. But he saw that seed, but he saw the sequoia. He saw the sequoia in the seed. The mustard seed grew. The biggest of herbs, trees, like a tree, provides shelter for the birds of the air. You have been destined, called into this earth for a time such as this, to provide shelter for those that don't have shelter. Your mouth has been called to provide shade when individuals are trapped and feeling the scorching of life. Your words bring life-giving water to them that quench that thirst, that give them and provide from them what they have need of. So when we talk about us being like a tree, that's what's referred to here, guys. I want to give you a little comparison here of what a tree um, that has been cut off that causes bitterness, like this sycamine tree, <clears throat> um, compared to what a tree in Psalm 1 looks like. And, and again, it is based off of what we are consuming. It is 100% based off of what we are consuming. Okay, uh, I talked to you uh, last time we were together about eating the fruit of the correct tree. It's the same thing. Making sure our source of water is the correct source. Because the, 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 the other source, the worldly source, is drying up. And if that's where I have all of my roots planted, I'm going to dry up with it. This is where we come in. We come across people in our daily lives, in our jobs, wherever. We are bringing life-giving water, which is designed to replace the water of the world and give them something that provides much more nutrition and nourishment for them. Are you with me? You guys are getting sleepy on me. Yes, you are. Don't tell me. I'm watching your heads, Bob. Ooh, ooh. Is it? Elder Evans, is it too cold for the super soaker? Oh, all right, we'll just let that slide. Dick. We'll just let it slide. I used to threaten them when they fall asleep on me. I was going to get a water gun out. Super soaker. All right. Anyway. Okay, guys. I'll make sure I covered everything here I wanted to this morning. Luke 19.4. One more. Got one more passage. Luke 19.4. Familiar passage dealing with Zacchaeus. I'm going to tie this up because here's, here's a perfect example of perspective. Not being able to see the forest from the trees. Luke 19, verse 1. <clears throat> and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, verse 2. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Now, he, no, no, no one liked him. You see what I'm saying? Those who could get something from him liked him, but most people didn't like him. He, he was a chief tax collector. He would basically be in charge of an IRS office in that region. So not only is he charging tax, but he's skimming off the top, too. Okay? He's skimming. Verse 3. 
And he sought to see Jesus and who he was. Interesting. He sought to see Jesus and who he was. Jesus, but do we still seek to see who he is? Hmm. So there's always a desire. Increase our appetite for you. Father, increase our appetite for you. And he sought to see Jesus and who he was and could not for the press. Too many people. There's too many people. He's short, like me, short and stubby. Because of his little stature. And he ran before the crowd and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. Now, it's very interesting. When I did a study on that, there's a sycamore and there's a sycamine. You do the, the Greek study on that. There's a comparison between the sycamine tree and the sycamore tree. I'm leading more towards the sycamine tree, and we just went over the characteristics of the sycamine tree. But listen, Zacchaeus was short, couldn't see over people, jumping, finally got tired of jumping and not seeing, runs ahead, climbs up in this tree. Climbing up in the tree gives him a different perspective. So no longer there's not an issue of not seeing the forest for the trees, amen? Because he's seeing above the forest now. He's seeing above everybody else, and he can actually look down and see Jesus. Not only that, when he realizes the love Jesus has for him, that causes a change in his heart. That sycamine tree, which would be that root of bitterness, that root of greed, that root of delicacies of the world and everything it has for me, he has now climbed up and is in a position of lording over the bitterness, the greed, and everything else because he is now seen. He is now seen Jesus, the one that liberates him from all that. And when Jesus is under him, he simply says, Jesus says, hey, Zacchaeus, man, come down. I want to have a meal in your house. And he comes down, and what happens then? He feels the love of Christ. Zacchaeus says, everyone that I've done this for. Look at, the, look at the change. Look at the change of what? Mindset. Because he spent time with the word. He spent time in the word. It changed his mindset. And Zacchaeus now goes for, from unrighteousness to righteousness. And in that righteousness, he says, I am going to restore everyone that I have wronged because you are now my example. Hope you got a little something out of that. All right. <clears throat> Let's do communion. I'm going to get you guys out of here. I was waiting on the kids. Who's going to help me with communion this morning? Come on up here, man. You help me with communion this morning. Yes, sir. Help me with communion this morning. So we'll start over here and we'll walk again. We'll come through, ladies and gentlemen. Take your elements. If you will, hold them till you get back to your seat, and we will commune together. <clears throat> Do you hold that for me? All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ given for you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The body and blood of the Lord given for you. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord God. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord God. You are worthy of all praise. Worthy of all praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We thank you for your goodness, Father. This is communion. Now your body broken. The cup we're drinking is bittersweet. The cup of friendship, true and salvation. Born of your suffering Hallelujah. on Calvary. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship Thank you, Lord God. We exalt you. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. chapter 11, about the 22nd, 23rd verse. The, Paul, the apostle Paul starts <clears throat> explaining revelation that he received, and it's interesting. Me saying this to you, be expecting of revelation. Be expecting of revelation. That's part of your birthright. Say that again. That's part of your birthright. Listen, there are things in the earth going on now that weren't necessarily going on here, but Daddy knew it all before the foundation of the world. When we are seeking wisdom from God, expect revelation from God. Don't pray haphazardly like you're throwing it up to the wind and it doesn't matter if it's answered or not. Don't do that. Be dogmatic about it. I hate to say it this way, but I'm going to say it this way. Be in daddy's face about it. Not arrogantly or disrespectfully, but let him know that he has something that you have need of. He already knows it, ladies and gentlemen. He already knows it. But truly what he is desiring is FaceTime with you more than anything else. He has already given you everything that you have need of. He says, I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. And in that, and in that, and in that is revelation. Okay? In that is revelation. So we take the precious body. We take the body represented by this wafer this morning. Here's your exchange, ladies and gentlemen. Understand what, what are you trying to tell me? Oh, okay. Um, cursed, cursed is everyone that was hung on a tree. Anything coming against you has already been dealt with. When he hung on that tree, he wasn't hanging there for himself. Say that again. <laughs> when he hung on that tree, you wake up. The sooner you wake up and work with me, you're going to get out of here. Listen, he did not hang on that tree for himself. Everything that you are looking for, trying to get, it's already been accomplished in him. And we celebrate him this morning. We celebrate what he went through this morning. Because as he hung there, you were on his mind. I was on his mind. The chastisement of your peace was put on him. If you're having issues with peace, look to him. If you're having issues with peace, fear and anxiety, start communing. 
But don't just throw the bread in your mouth and walk back the grape juice. Process that. Process that, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you were pleased to bruise Jesus so that I would not have to go through that. That you made a way out of no way. His name is Jesus. It pleased you to bruise him and everything that he took on himself for me, he made that exchange and gave me everything that is of him. That's what we celebrate this morning. We have all that he is. Now, take and eat. After supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the new covenant. In my blood. Blood dripping faith. Blood dripping faith. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be afraid to use that blood. Don't be afraid to use that blood. Every time when you pray and you lose the word of God, it's it should be it should be coated in blood. I mean, literally, when those word of God comes out of your mouth, it should be dripping with the blood of Jesus. Because I mean that thing, that who Lord have mercy. Just dripping, knowing, knowing, knowing that it has been done by the blood. Everything that I asked for has already been satisfied in Christ Jesus. And as soon as it comes out of my mouth, I know it is mine because the blood has purchased it. The blood has purchased me. Go ahead, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and drink. That is what sealed you, Ephesians 4. 29 and 30, until the day of redemption. That is your weapon. That is what covers your house, both the physical structure that you live in and your body. Because when the death angel sees it, it's got to go by. When anything that stands to come against you, it's got to go by because of the blood. Hallelujah. Okay. Father, while you're on your feet, thank you for this day, Lord God. We praise your holy name, Father. We thank you for your worship this morning, Lord God, the fact that we could worship you in this place and you come down as you lifted us and we meet with you. We thank you for your precious body and blood, Lord Jesus. As we depart this place, Lord God, the vehicles and conveyances that we travel touch nothing, and we touch nothing in those vehicles and conveyances. They are covered bumper to bumper, side to side, top to bottom, even while they are parked and parked with us in them. Father, your people, your people, send them forth this morning in your wisdom, an apostolic people out of an apostolic center, trees planted by rivers of living water. Don't think just because it's winter you're not in the midst of growth because you are. Don't be afraid to bear fruit, though the temperature is cold, because the fruit you bear is everlasting, brings glory to the kingdom, 30, 60, and 100 fold. Father, I send them forth now in the love and compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they are empowered with resurrection power through the Holy Spirit. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to want you to agree with me on a prayer that came in. Sister Sharon, right now we speak. We speak to your body. The word says where two agree is touching anything on this earth, it shall be done. If you're watching, you must come into agreement with this. We can pray here all day long, but the mindset you have to have is that I am healed. You speak to the pain that you are dealing with in your body. You command that it has to go in Jesus' name. It has to go in Jesus' name and by the blood. We decree from the top of your head to the soles of your feet that you were healed by the stripes of Jesus according to Isaiah 53, 5, 1 Peter 2, 24. Forbid it to stay in Jesus' name. Can I get some agreement on that? Thank you guys so much for this morning. A wonderful service. I appreciate you all. You are at liberty.